All right, guys. So through the next couple weeks, um, we're going to be following sort of a curriculum. And how it's going to work is I'm going to teach you all of the guards that exist in jiu-jitsu. And it's going to be sort of a shallow dive into each one. So I'm going to show you how to play the guard as far as retention and not getting your guard passed. Then I'm going to show you how to sweep with the guard. And then I'm going to show you a submission from the guard. And then I'm also going to show you how to pass the guard. So those are the four components. Um, I'm not going to be able to remember them as I list it here. Play the guard, sweep from the guard, submit from the guard, and how to pass the guard. So the very first one we're going to start with is one of the furthest guards that you can set up. So in jiu-jitsu, there's different um, zones of engagement. I've called them the layers of guard before. Basically, if I'm far from my opponent, this would be the furthest guard. It's like open guard. He's the farthest away from me. I have no grips. I can't really reach him instantly. He would have to engage onto me. And then from here, I could get my grips once he engages into me. There's many different ways to secure your grips, but that's not really what we're focusing on right now. You're going to get your grips, and we're going to start at one of the furthest layers of the guard, which is spider guard. Okay, so spider guard looks something like this here. You're using your feet. I'm not sure why they call it. I guess because spiders like use webs with their feet. You're kind of doing the same thing. You're webbing up your opponent. Okay. This layer of guard here is temporary. It's very difficult to maintain the same guard over the course of a match because when Austin feels the guard that I set up, whichever guard I select is sort of like your weapon of choice in that engagement. Right now I've selected my spider guard weapon. And so he's gonna counter with his spider guard counter, which is to weave his hands on the inside, on both sides, and then initiate a pass. From this situation, my guard has been broken. I can't just immediately go back to spider guard because my grips are gone. And he's probably going to initiate a passing movement that is going to force a reaction from me. He's going to try and pass my guard one way or the other. I'm going to have to create space and get whatever grip I can here. So let's say I get a grip and I have to transition down into a slightly closer layer, De La Hiva guard. So you can see he's come a little bit closer compared to spider guard where I only had control of his arms. He broke my spider guard grip, but I get my De La Hiva and I'm in De La Hiva right? He's a little bit closer to me. From this point, he's not just going to pass instantly from here. He's going to break my De La Hiva guard. So he's going to pop my foot off. He's going to engage maybe into like a knee cut to this side here. I can't just not do anything. I have to set up my next guard. This is going to be slightly closer. So this would be like the third layer here. I have a lasso. I can reset and now I'm in a lasso position. And now I'm even just a little bit closer. His posture is a little bit more broken. I have him a little bit closer to my body. We've transcended to the third layer. From here, maybe he weaves his hand out, breaks my lasso, and starts knee cutting a little bit even tighter here like this. Now I'm in reverse De La Hiva. From this position, I would have to try and set up my other attack, but maybe he beats me still and he starts getting cross face pressure and I, lo I lose my, De La Hiva, my reverse De La Hiva. Here, now I'm in half guard. As you can see, he's moved further in. We're around a fifth layer type of guard here like this. He's close to me, but he doesn't have full chest to chest contact yet. I still have a little bit of space to move. I can set up half guard attacks. Okay. As he gets more and more uh, effective at passing these guards, I have to transition into deeper, deeper guards. So let's say he knee cuts again here like this. I'm kind of losing my half guard now. I could transition into deep half to save the situation and still maintain a guard, right? This is one of the closest layers, right? Some of the last layers. From here, if he passes my guard, I don't have much I can do to recover into a new guard, okay? Maybe he steps over my head with this leg like this and he sits through and I'm not really in a position to get guard again. Now I'm just, he's basically passed at this point. If he passes this guard, it's over, all right? He's won the guard passing versus guard playing game, okay? So to have good guard retention, it's not necessarily about like, being able to push your hips and like swing your legs over. It's about the like transitioning through the cascade of guard positions. And that's a, like, I don't expect anyone to know all the transition because there's many different guards and you don't necessarily have to go in that order. I could go from spider guard into a deep half if I wanted to. I could start the match with half guard, but it's in your best interest to know these positions because the further away he is from me, the more opportunities I have to regain another guard and control the match in some manner, okay? Lapel guards fit into these positions. There's all sorts. There's probably 20 or so guard positions you can play. We're gonna focus on some basic ones. Today we're gonna do just spider guard, 
All right, does that make sense, what I just explained? That's the concept of the layers of guard. And it's very important because if you ignore that concept and you don't try and transition into a, a guard that it still has distance between you, like if I go immediately from spider and he passes my guard and I just immediately go to half guard. It's like I only gave him two things to fight through, my spider and my half. But after half, there's not much left. You're just going to be scrambling to try and escape and maybe just get back to half guard. But to get back to the full distance guards, like, an, like a spider or a collar sleeve or a delahiva, something with a little more range, affords you the opportunity to do more. If you're in half guard, your, op your options are much less because you don't have something you can fall back on. You just immediately go to escaping side control or mount or something like that. So it's a good idea to learn how to play an open guard. That's why lapel guard is really powerful. Most people don't understand why it is, but it's actually because it has layers of its own and you can kind of transition through those and it doesn't require as much leg dexterity as some of the more traditional open guards do. It kind of keeps the guard closed from the furthest distance all the way to the closest distance and there's no opportunity for him to really break the position and immediately initiate a guard passing movement. You can just kind of transition through the grips and he's tied up the whole time until eventually you sweep him because for him to actually close the final layer and break past the final layer, he'd have to break the lapel grip, which is very difficult to do. So that's why it's so effective. It just lets you kind of re go from the furthest layer down to about midway and then back to the furthest layer. And he, you just run him through a cycle of that out, those outer layers instead of letting him get to half guard, deep half guard, smash half, things of that nature, okay? So let's start with spider guard. Here, we have no grips, my opponent steps in and maybe I lay it back here and he grabs my pants and I grab his sleeves, like this. What you don't wanna do is lay flat on your back and keep your legs symmetrical. The way to maintain a spider guard is to extend one leg and turn to that side that you're extending, like this. And I don't just stay here because as he moves around from one side to the other, I have to switch my angle to maintain control here. This extension of my right leg on my left leg is what stops the immediate counter. If I'm pulling at his wrist here and he tries to weave his bottom hand in, now it's much more difficult because I cut the angle. If I stay centered, it's very easy for him to cut the angle in and get his wrist weaved inside. So you must turn onto the far hip. So whichever leg is extended, I'm turning to that hip here. Making sure that my pulling motion is pulling my elbows up, not down. If I pull his hands down like this, it kind of helps him weave his hand underneath and break the position, and I'm forced to let go and try and go to a different guard because I lost a spider guard. So extension here, and when he steps to the other side to do some sort of action on this side, I switch. If he does manage to start breaking the position or weave uh, his hand in, I would counter it by bringing my leg through and putting on a lasso here. If he starts to walk back to this side, I would transition to the spider back on this side, here, if he starts to break this grip and weave it through, I extend through and lasso here. Now this is mostly defensive. There's not too many attacks you can do from spider. There's a few sweeps, there's a few triangle uh, attacks. Um, but for right now, let's just practice this motion going side to side. So the person on top is going to step from one side to the other, trying to break these positions here. As he comes back to this side, I extend, and then go back to the other side, Austin. I extend, and I'm really cutting these angles. And then when you feel good with this, the person on top can start trying to break the grips. And when he tries to break the grip, you take your foot off the, the bicep, extend it through, come over the top. Then he's going to walk back to the other side here. Now I'm out of my spider guard position. I replace, extend to this side, and here. When he walks back to the other side, I replace, extend, and as he weaves his hand, I weave my leg. He walks back to the other side, I replace, he weaves this hand. I don't go out this way because that, I can't put my spider guard back in. I bring it in front, weave through, and lasso. Everyone understand? Let's try that real fast. One, two, three.